let's set up a bike. Hi, everyone, and welcome to pal to tech We have a very special product to review on today's video. Let me introduce you to the brave new world of electric bikes and the VeloWave Ranger. Priced at about $1,500, this is obviously not a cheap purchase. However, for an electric bike with these motor specs and features, it's actually a very good price for the type of bike that you're getting. Before I go any further, let me say that VeloWave reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review this unit, or <laughs> this bike and I was actually going to write back to them and say no thank you. In fact, I started composing that no thank you email back to VeloWave. When I was younger, I used to go riding all the time. My dad taught me how to ride and we used to go riding together everywhere. But as I grew older, I got out of the habit of bike riding and I just got too busy these past few years. I do want to point out that this is not a sponsored video. VeloWave did not pay me to review this bike, nor did I allow Allow them any input into the content of this video. They were not allowed to see it until right now when it's been published for everyone. Now the bike is shipped to you in one huge box. <laughs> All the tools and everything you need to assemble it is included right in the box. It took us about half an hour to assemble it. I mean really you're basically putting on the front tire, adding the battery, and fastening on the handlebars. Now once assembled the first thing I realized right away is that this is a solid and very rugged bike. The Ranger model has very large 26 inch by 4 inch all-terrain tires that I would have no problem taking this bike off-roading. It has all the same design as a normal bike, such as a kickstand, a bike seat, which I found to be soft and comfortable, a fully aluminum body, which is solid and well-built, bike pedals, gears, handlebars, and so forth. But that's where the normal bike ends, because this is an electric bike. It also has a 48 volt 15 mm amp hour lithium battery installed below the seat area. The battery is charged by this AC power charger, which <laughs> is kind of funny because this is about the size of something that you would see, I don't know, charging a Dell laptop or something, and yet this will charge this entire bike. You plug it into the little charging port right here, and I can charge the bike from zero to 80% in about four hours, and I can go fully charged in eight hours. The battery is basically powering a 750 50 watt high speed geared motor. This motor is hooked into a seven speed drivetrain and on the right side handlebars, you have gears available for those times that you want to pedal. You also get a nice electric headlight for riding at night. Now, if you just want to sit on and ride the bike without pedaling whatsoever and have the bike do all the work, you can hold down this throttle switch right here. The bike can go up to about a maximum of 20 miles an hour on its own without doing any pedaling at all. A full battery charge can get you riding up to a range of about 25 to 35 miles. Now, if you pedal assist, you can go further on a single charge, of course, up to about 40 plus miles between charges. This all depends on your weight and the conditions of the terrain. It is so easy to go from regular bike to electric bike, just turn it on. <laughs> the display is great and very easy to see while you're riding. You also have five levels of pedal assist, meaning if you put it in, say, level one, then if you are pedaling, you are doing most of the work, like a regular bike. But as you increase the values up to five, the bike's motor is going to kick in and assist you while you're pedaling and do most of the hard work for you. And this leads me to one of my favorite things about the bike. The great thing about this bike is that when you're pedaling, going uphill doesn't feel like you're going uphill. Going uphill feels like you're pedaling on flat, straight land. Because basically you are riding the bike with the feel that you're going on a flat surface, but you could be going up a hill. I love that about the bike. So how fast can you go on this bike? What's the top speed? Well. 
I decided to try it out. So now we're gonna do a speed test on a straightaway. I've got a GoPro camera. I'm gonna mount it right here, and you're gonna be able to see in real time how fast I'm going in miles per hour. I'm gonna be pedaling with the motor assisting me, and I'm gonna have this set to five. So if you are on a straightaway and you're just sitting on the bike, pressing the throttle and not pedaling, the bike is limited to 20 miles per hour max. However, if you pedal the bike, you can assist the motor and I was able to get up to 32 miles per hour on straightaways. Now, if you hit a very steep hill, and I mean a very steep hill, there will be some times that you're gonna need to actually do some pedaling to get the bike up the hill. The motor will not be able to do all of it. Again, very steep hills. But even then, when you are pedaling, it still feels like you're pedaling on a straightaway. Basically, I think just about anyone with any fitness level should be able to ride this bike anywhere. However, the recommended height of the rider is 5.6 to 6.2 feet, and the maximum load capacity of this bike is 330 pounds. And the bike unit itself weighs 75 pounds. There is a front suspension system that you can adjust, and one of my favorite parts of the bike is the hydraulic disc brakes. They're great, very smooth, and they don't jitter or shake when you're, say, going from a very fast speed down a hill and you're slowly starting to apply the brake, it'll smoothly and gently stop the bike. Now, as far as issues are concerned, I found three main ones. Although none of them are really deal breakers, the first is the gear dial, which I found to be pretty much impossible to see while I'm riding the bike. The numbers are too small, it's behind this little plastic housing. It's difficult to see it. So it needs to be larger and it needs to be easier to see what gear you're in. The second issue also concerns the gears. And I found it a bit too easy to shift in and out of gears accidentally as I was holding on to the right handlebar. I did get used to that after a few days, but I would prefer slightly more resistance to switching gears using the handlebar grip. And lastly, the instructions. VeloWave. You need to work on these. The diagrams need to be larger and easier to see the various parts of the bike as you're putting it together. You have two ways of installing the front wheel. I didn't know which one was better or whatever, so I just defaulted to the first page. I would have liked to have had a more comprehensive explanation of the bike parts, etc., some best practices and so forth, and more expanded info. I do think that this would help make the setup much easier for first timers. So my overall gear review opinion is that this is a great bike. Within 30 minutes out of the box, I was riding it and I've ridden about a hundred miles on it so far. It held up perfectly in all kinds of weather and road conditions. If you are looking for an electric bike, look no further. For the price and what you're getting, this is a great choice that I would recommend to anyone. I also had VeloWave agree to knock $50 off the price and I will have a special code in the description down below this video. I want to say just just one final thing. Up until now, every piece of gear that I've reviewed on this channel has helped me to create something. A more advanced camera to get more higher resolution photos. A smoother gimbal to get better stabilization. A bigger lens to get closer to my subject. But what I discovered in the course of making this video is that there are things out there that aren't meant to always create something or accomplish something. In trying to describe this bike, it's almost as if 